Hi, Mike. I'm here with Mr. Wilson. In today's show, we have a story on fishing licenses. So, how can you? Area 51. And Viking crew. I'm Mike. And I'm Carson. And you're watching SVTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform. Finding character. And giving others a voice. This is SVTV. The art students have created a new mural in the hallway. Sage and Cade found out more. Kendall Epperson was chosen as this year's Untung Hero for his efforts in this community. So yeah, on the portraits, each year uh, the students get to select somebody in the building they'd like to honor as an unsung hero. And so this year there was an extra prompt, which was they had to select an alumnus from Seaman High School, you know, somebody who's graduated from the high school in the last hundred years. And This year we chose Kendall because he grew up in the Seaman District and he graduated from Seaman and then he came back to work for us. And Kendall has done a lot in his life, especially for our district, and we were really thankful for that. Many students helped out with this project. From start to finish, they worked on it for about three and a half weeks. And um, so they, they spent quite a bit of time outside of class in order to make that happen. They, they came in one evening, uh, one day on a Sunday. Uh, there were a few of them that came in. And then they came in one night and stayed, some of them, until 1030 to work on it. Make sure to stop by and read all about this project. If you see Kendall in the hallways, make sure to thank him for his hard work. There's a new program starting this year called Viking Crew. Let's find out more about it. Viking Crew is a new mentoring program which allows upperclassmen to bond with freshmen during CALP time. All right, well, Viking Crew is a basically a mentorship program that we put together um, last spring. Uh, it's a group of um, upperclassmen, uh, juniors and seniors, who uh, we kind of selected uh, as part of this uh, role where they're going into um, the freshman uh, CLP classes uh, twice a week. The uh, mentorship program is really helping out the freshmen. It kind of builds a community between some of the juniors and the seniors and lets, lets kids that are freshmen, they're coming into a brand new building and um, a lot of changes, kind of get some experience and hear some things from the kids who have experienced those things. And, uh, you know, uh, early in the year we talked about the back to school dance and it let the freshmen kind of hear some experiences and what to expect and um, just gives the mentors a chance to kind of pass along some of the experiences they've had and the knowledge they've had. Well, it's a great opportunity for both the freshmen and the upperclassmen because we get to form relationships with the freshmen and we get to know them better and it's like good for them so they can like see like a friendly face in the hallway like if they have to come over to the high school side. It's fun to get to know other people in other grades because now like I see them around the hallway and I'm just like hey I know who you are. It's just like, what's up? And I, like, I'll just, like, if I see them outside of school, I'll ask them how they're doing. It's just, it's fun to have that connection with them because I, if they're a freshman, like, it's just nice to be a freshman and have a connection with an upperclassman, so. This is the Viking Crew's first year at SHS. They plan on continuing the program for future freshmen. I wish I had that when I was a freshman. Yeah, me too. That would have been great. Now, end your announcements. Right now, the fishing club is giving out free licenses. Emery went to find out more. Hi, Mike. I'm here with Mr. Wilson, and he's going to talk to us about free fit, the free fishing license. So how can students get a free fishing license? The Caw Valley chapter of Quails Unlimited sent an email to me this spring and asked if they were to give us $500, what would we do with it? And I told him I'd buy fishing license for our members of our fishing club. So when the check came in, it was $1,500 instead of $500. So I've opened it up to the whole school. So any kid 16 or older that would like to buy a fishing license, if they'll bring me their license, I will write them a, a get a check from the student bank, 
and they can be reimbursed for their cost of a license. If they choose to buy the five-year license, which I would recommend as a kid, um, we will only reimburse the one year of it. Uh, if they want to buy a lifetime license, which is a great birthday present for a 16-year-old young man or lady that is interested in fishing, we will re reimburse the cost of one year. Right now, that's twenty-seven fifty. All right. And is Fishing Club planning any trips? We have a trip planned for the Friday we have off after parent-teachers conferences towards the end of the month. Um, we haven't decided where we're going to go yet. We're still planning that. Um, so any kids that are interested in going on that trip needs to contact me so I can make sure I have enough transportation for everybody. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Now back to your anchors. That's awesome. Make sure to pick up a fishing license if you're interested. Today during kelp, all seniors will report to the football field for a picture to commemorate Siemens 100th year. If any senior is unavailable to present the senior group picture, another picture will be taken on November 6th at 1040. The Spirit Bus will be sponsoring a Spirit Bus to Junction City game October 18th. Cost is $6 and includes transportation, pizza, and entry to the game. Permission slips can be found on your Class of Schoology page. There will be a meeting in the library at 1.15 on Friday during CALP for anyone interested in volunteering or competing in the First Thirst Water Relay Race. If you're a SHARP student, make sure to go follow the SHS SHARP on Instagram. Now over to Ike with the sports. Oh, hi. What am I doing? Oh, I'm practicing for the water walk on... Saturday, October 12th from 4.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Seaman High School football field and stadium. All proceeds go to Thirst Project. Can't wait to see you there. We've got a lot of sports in action tonight. The girls JV golf team is going to Junction City. Freshman football is going to Perry LeCompton. Freshman volleyball is going to Emporia. And tonight is the Sharp soccer game against Highland Park. So, if you're a Sharp student, make sure you go to the game because admission is free. That's all we have for sports. Now over to Josh with the weather. Oh my, I stepped outside this morning. It was like a whole new world. The wind chill just 47 degrees this morning and that comes with a major change in our air mass but what brought us that change was a cold front and we picked up nearly one inch of rain Tuesday and Wednesday combined so it has been a bit of a wet stretch toward the middle of the week but now we are drier and we are certainly much cooler outside here's your headlines taking us through the next seven days again today much cooler our storms will return for Saturday, but overall seasonal conditions carry us, carrying us all the way through the next week for our weather. Now we do have some events coming up. Sharp Fall Fun Day at Gary's Berries is tomorrow, and it looks like we'll be in the upper 50s, so definitely want to bring a jacket or a hoodie to Gary's Berries tomorrow. And our rain chance will be at about 30%. So it could be a little bit of light rain, maybe some sprinkles, but we're not expecting a washout for fun day tomorrow. Then Friday comes around and we have, or that was actually on Friday. So then Friday night comes around and we have the football game. Color chaos is the theme. Our temperature should again be in the upper 50s, but it should be dry Friday evening, mostly cloudy skies. Saturday, here comes the rain chance. You can see 7 a.m. just to our west. By 9 a.m., it's likely raining and storming here in the capital city. But uh, the, the good news is that by noon, this starts to push off over towards Kansas City. The first half of the KU game could be wet if you're heading out there. Then sleep in a box is this weekend, and good news, it looks like it will be dry. Sunny and 62 to start at 6 p.m., and then we will fall all the way down into the 40s by the time we leave at 6 a.m. So that's going to be a cold one as well. Here's your SVTV seven day forecast. You can see that Friday could be a little bit of rain, better chance Saturday morning. And then look at that nice stretch of weather highs in the upper 60s to around 70 early next week. And what's not on here, but it is significant coming up is next Thursday, a much stronger cold front looks to arrive and that will bring the return of some much 
cooler temperatures. There's your latest weather forecast. Now, Ike and Carson, back to you. Hey Ike, did you hear about the people storming Area 51? Yeah, I did. Bunch of hooligans doing some shenanigans. Yeah, let's find out more about it. The Area 51 raid was a large internet sensation that started off with one man making a joke Facebook event and grew into a very large following that included plans and even its own subreddit dedicated to preparing for the raid. Yeah, I was following the Area 51 raid just a little, but enough to know basically what's going on. Not really. I was just kind of listening to what other people said and w whatever popped up on the internet. <laughs> Many people signed up for the raid, with two million signing up at the very end saying that they would go, which led to many expectations of how the raid would turn out. I was expecting more people to either get arrested or shot, practically. Like, I mean, it's a highly classified government facility. Of course, people really can't get in it. Okay, millions of people. Just, no, well, not millions, because like the, there was like 3,000, right? Oh, okay, that's fair enough. Two million people were dead. That, that's basically what I was thinking. <laughs> Once people stopped talking about the raid as it came closer, people believed nobody was actually going to show up. Well, I wasn't expecting since, like, there was, like, 150, I think, or I believe, that showed up, and then 75 that actually approached the gate. So I was kind of impressed with that, so yeah. I was sort of, um let down by the fact that they didn't actually break in. <laughs> Dang it, no aliens! One of my favorite YouTubers saw something in the sky when they were, um, uh, like in the middle of the night during what was supposed to be, or around the time that the Area 51 was supposed to be raided. So maybe there was aliens and they just skedaddled. Just have, couldn't get the cat girls and the aliens. <laughs> <gasps> Where's my alien bro, Tony? Even though people thought that no one was going to the raid, a lot of people actually did and surprised the whole world when they did it. Wow, now that was out of this world. Heck yeah, it was. We'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Thank you.